children welcome back to the lecture series of halogen derivatives this is a chapter from grade 12 maharashtra board chemistry this is the sixth video of the same chapter where we are going to discuss about the reaction mechanism so in this chapter we have got two reaction mechanism one is sn1 and the other one is sn2 today we are going to discuss sn1 and sn2 thoroughly So let's get started. My name is Arpita Banerjee, and you are watching Arpita Classes. So, what is SN one reaction? Let us understand the meaning of SN one. Here, S means substitution. Substitution. N stands for nucleophilic, and One stands for unimolecular. So this is the literal meaning of SN one substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. So basically, it is a nucleophilic substitution reaction which is unimolecular in nature. Now, what is a nucleophilic substitution reaction? To understand that, first we will understand what is a nucleophile. Nucleo Five. So now, nucleo word. This word is related to nucleus. Okay. And here, nucleus means positively charged. So nucleus word means it is positively charged, and phi means loving. Okay. So anything which is positively charged, loving, is a nucleophile. Okay. so any species which is a nucleophile means which is a positively uh, charged loving species should be either negatively charged or electron rich okay we understand that so nucleophile is denoted by this way either it is negatively charged species or it is having electrons lone pair of electrons so that can be called as a nucleophile so this will be a nucleus loving or positively charged loving species so for example i can say like cl minus cn minus oh minus h2o because it is it has got lone pair of electron ammonia because nitrogen has got lone pair of electron all these species can be considered as nucleophile okay so we understood what is a nucleophile now let us understand what is a nucleophilic substitution reaction so for example i am taking rx this is my alkyl halide this is alkyl halide okay now here you know that the carbon and halogen bond is a polar bond because x is much more electronegative than carbon and that's why it gets a very small amount of negative charge and this gets a very small amount of positive charge so x minus is a nucleophile here and if this is reacted with oh minus another nucleophile and we get a product as roh plus x minus this is called nucleophilic substitution reaction because what is happening this oh minus is attacking this positively charged species that is carbon here positively charged this oh minus since it is positively charged loving so this is a positively charged side this oh minus will attack this carbon and x will go from this species x will leave this species so finally we get roh which is an alcohol okay and x minus which is called as leaving nucleophile okay this is leaving nucleophile okay and this is called as attacking nucleophile since this nucleophile is attacking so this is called as attacking nucleophile so this is what is your nucleophilic substitution reaction okay now why this is called as unimolecular and what is the mechanism of it that we are going to see so uh, yeah so take it down i will just uh, erase this and then i'll go for the next topic that why this is called as unimolecular let us find out what is the mechanism of the reaction and why this is called as unimolecular reaction okay so let us take one example where this is my alkyl halide 
okay and for the SN1 since we are discussing the SN1 mechanism this is SN1 mechanism so my alkyl halide should be necessarily 3 degree alkyl halide okay now the nucleophile is suppose it is reacting with KOH aqueous this is aqueous KOH it is reacting with the product is ROH plus X minus. So what is happening here? This KOH from here the OH minus nucleophile is generated. From here the X minus is coming out. So later, you, later on you can understand that K and X will combine together. And therefore the byproduct here will be KX. That is the byproduct here. Okay, so this is the thing. Now what is the mechanism of this reaction? Let us find out the mechanism. This reaction which is SN1 reaction happens in two steps. Okay. Step number one. Step number one is the formation of carbocation. Formation of carbocation. So, in this reaction, nucleophilic doesn't attack in the first step. First is carbocation formation. Here the nucleophile is a weak nucleophile. The attacking nucleophile is a weak nucleophile and that is why it, should not, it does not attack in the very first step. The first step is a carbocation formation and that is why we have taken 3 degree alkyl halide because we know that 3 degree carbocation is more stable than 2 degree which is again more stable than 1 degree. So first of all the carbocation formation is the first step. I am taking an example of uh, suppose this reaction uh, CH3 whole thrice CBr plus aqueous KOH okay and we get CH3 whole thrice COH plus KBr. I am talking about this the mechanism of this particular reaction. So let us take this uh, alkyl halide this is my 3 degree alkyl halide so this is CH3 whole thrice CBr this is my 3 degree alkyl halide which is your tertiary butyl bromide the name of this compound is tertiary butyl bromide now when this reacts with KOH in presence of water aqueous means it is in presence of water now here water acts as a nucleophile as well as it acts as a solvent. Now since this is very weak nucleophile, what is a weak nucleophile? So in the first step what is happening? The carbocation formation is happening. That means first this leaving nucleophile is leaving the species and you are getting a carbocation which is your 3 degree carbocation CH3, CH3, CH3 and this is your plus charge. Br minus has left. Okay, this is our first step. Carbocation formation. Now, why this carbocation is forming? Because this carbocation is a 3 degree carbocation which is stable, and that is why the reaction is proceeding towards a first step. Now, this is the RDS of the whole reaction. RDS means the rate determining step. Which is the rate determining step? The slowest step of the entire process is called as a rate determining step. Now this reaction happens in two steps and this step is the slowest step and that is why it is called as a rate determining step and in ex uh, from experiments it has been found out the rate of the whole reaction is dependent, it is directly proportional to the uh, Rx over here, the alkyl halide you are taking, the whole reaction, the rate of this whole reaction that is the RDS is depending on only this alkyl halide. There is no other molecule is involved in the rate determining step and that is why the rate of the entire reaction depends on the alkyl halide. So this is called as unimolecular since only one molecule is involved in this in the rate determining step therefore it is called as unimolecular reaction. Though it is not right to say it is a unimolecular reaction because molecularity is determined for a elementary reaction which happens in only one step but this is for this complex reaction molecularity doesn't take place, it is not signified but still uh, you can say this is the order of the reaction actually it is a first order reaction but then still it is named as unimolecular from long so we will consider this only that the rate of the reaction depends on only alkyl halide that depends on only one molecule and that is why this is called as unimolecular reaction. Another thing is here 
the so this is the first step okay now the next step is what the uh, attacking of the nucleophile so let us see how the nucleophile attacks please take down this i'll show you how the nucleophile attacks i'll rub this part okay i'll rub this part okay. step of this reaction is step 2 the nucleophilic attack nucleophilic attack on the carbocation on the carbocation so your carbocation is c ch3 ch3 and ch3 i purposely drew the carbocation like this because it is a 3 degree carbocation which is having a square planar uh, uh, geometry okay uh, i mean triangular planar geometry sorry triangular planar geometry where all the ch3 groups are far apart from each other and they make 120 degree angle to each other so this is the structure stereochemistry of the carbocation you can say now the nucleophile the nucleophile is water molecule over here h2o with its lone pair can attack from this side or the molecule h2o can attack from this side also because this carbon positively charged carbon is open to get attack from both the sides because of its structure right so accordingly we'll be getting the product which is a racemic mixture we get get 50% probability is that that we get a d product 50% probability we get a levo rotatory product so equal amount of uh, dextro and levo rotatory product we can get and that is why we call that it's a racemic mixture or we get the racemic size product okay so now i'm showing the a nucleophilic attack just uh, from one side only i'm showing it so this is your ch3 ch3 and ch3 okay i'll show that at uh, from this side yeah so this side ch3 and this is also ch3 the lone pair of oxygen attack the carbon so that is why this is your water molecule carbon and oxygen bond has been uh, made and oxygen will be getting a positively charged because it has given its lone pair to carbon now in the second step again water molecule will come into the picture this lone pair now this oxygen to neutralize its positive charge it will pull the electrons from hydrogen one of the hydrogen so this hydrogen will be as h plus and this lone pair will be given to this hydrogen so finally you are getting c ch3 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 and this is your oh alcohol plus h3o plus this you are getting so this is your product that is tertiary butyl alcohol this is your product as i mentioned before that the attack can be from this side or the attack can be from this side if the attack is from this side you are getting the oh on the right hand side of the carbon and if the attack is from the left hand side you are getting the oh on the left hand side of the carbon so accordingly we get two products i'll just show you the other product also so that is why we call that it is a racemic mixture so another product is what c CH3 CH3 and OH this side and CH3 so these are the two i mean uh, same product you get but then one is dextro rotatory one is levo rotatory and that is why it is called as uh, racemic mixture now where the the uh, structure is maintained okay if you start with the tertiary if i suppose in the uh, starting the st substrate was this i took the br this side so if wherever the br is there if you get the oh on the same side then we call we say that it is the retention of configuration this is retention of configuration that is the configuration is retained but if the br is this side in the beginning and you are getting oh on the opposite side then we call it inversion of configuration inversion of configuration okay so yeah so that is your sn1 reaction so in short if i tell you the uh, summary of the mechanism then sn1 reaction is nucleophilic substitution unimolecular reaction which happens in two steps 
So the first step is the formation of carbocation. So since it is the formation of carbocation, therefore the uh, uh, the order of the reaction will be for the alkyl halide. The order of the reaction for the alkyl halide for the alkyl halide would be three degree alkyl halide greater than two degree alkyl halide which is again greater than 1 degree alkyl halide. So this will be the order of the reaction since you know that 3 degree alkyl halide, 3 degree uh, carbocation is the most stable carbocation. So this is the order of the reaction. So the first step is the attack of the, um, sorry, the first step is the formation of the carbocation and then the second step is the attacking of the nucleophile. Now here the first step that is the formation of the carbocation is the slowest step and it depends only on the alkyl halide therefore the rate depends on only one molecule and that is why it is called as unimolecular as I told you. Here we are using the solvent that is water which is a polar protic solvent. Now this is again very important. It is a polar protic solvent. The solvent is here water. Solvent is water which is a polar protic solvent. In this particular mechanism, we need to use polar protic solvent and what are polar protic solvent which uh, generate an H plus that is called as polar protic solvent. Another polar protic solvents are uh, CH3OH, then C2H5OH that is alcohols. These are also polar protic solvent. Now what is the use of this polar protic solvent? If you remember, the first step is the generation of the carbocation where the nucleophile is, uh, sorry, the leaving nucleophile. Okay, if this is the substrate, if this is the substrate and uh, uh, first step, the, this nucleophile is leaving and you are getting the carbocation like this. Okay, now, this leaving nucleophile also can attack the carbocation because this is negatively charged and this is positively charged. So, this again, the attack can be possible here. So, to remove, to prevent this attack, the polar protic solvent is used because polar protic solvent will do what? It will surround the living nucleophile in such a manner, it will cage the living nucleophile, you know, so that it doesn't attack and in the second state, another nucleophile can attack. So that is the reason here we are using polar protic solvent, okay? Now in the next step, since we are getting a planar, triangular planar carbocation, the nucleophilic attack in the second step can be from both the sides. Okay? So accordingly we are getting two products. We can get dextrorotatory or levorotatory product. Equal amounts of product uh, we can get and that is why the, there are two products which is one is retention of configuration and the other one is inversion of configuration. So that is the stereochemistry of this reaction. I hope everyone understood what is SN1. I have the write-up that I am going to show you later on. First I am explaining you. Then later on I will show you the write-up. You can take it down. Okay. Now let us discuss about the SN2 mechanism, okay? Now, when you talk about SN2 mechanism, you understand the meaning of S, that is, again, substitution, okay? S is substitution. The meaning of N, that is, nucleophilic, and the meaning of 2, that is, bimolecular. So here the difference is bimolecular, right? Now there are a lot of difference between SN1 and SN2 mechanism. SN2 mechanism goes uh, via one step only. SN1, there were two steps in SN1. In SN2, there is only one step. So what happens here is, the we will take one degree alkyl halide. Suppose I am taking the example of CH3Br. Okay, this plus, I will write the reaction over there. One minute. The reaction is suppose CH3Br that is a 1 degree alkyl halide and the name of this alkyl halide is methyl bromide. Okay, so we took methyl bromide and we are reacting this with uh, say OH minus again and we are getting CH3OH uh, plus Br minus. This is the reaction. Okay, in this case we are using acetone which is a polar aprotic solvent, okay? So you can see in SN1 we have used polar aprotic, here we are using polar aprotic. Now this reaction goes via one step only. It is a one step reaction, okay? 
So what happens is here we are taking the alkyl halide CH3 Br which is essentially a 1 degree alkyl halide. The nucleophile OH minus in the first step, it's one step only. So first the nucleophile will be attacking the carbon. This is a positively charged carbon and this is negatively charged carbon. So is a negatively charged Br minus. So this OH minus will be attacking the carbon and Br minus will be leaving. And this both the things will happen in one step only. The attacking of the nucleophile and the leaving of the living nucleophile will happen in single step. Because here the nucleophile is strong enough, so it will be attacking in the beginning only. Okay, so what happens is the attacking should be from the back side again. Why? Because there already a Br minus is there, a negative nucleophile is there. So nucleophile cannot attack from this side, there will be a repulsion. Negatively charged, negatively charged repulsion. So the nucleophile has to attack from the back side. And because of that, your alkyl halide essentially should be 1 degree alkyl halide because the backside has to be sterically unhindered. It should not be sterically crowded. If it is a 3 degree alkyl halide, the nucleophile will not get a chance to attack it. Okay, it has to be sterically, you know, uh, unhindered or sterically not crowded. Okay, so attack will take place from this side, from back side and the leaving group will be leaving from this side. So you are getting a product like this, a transition state rather, like this. This is, these are your CH3. Here there will be a partially bond um, formed between the attacking nucleophile and carbon and here there will be a partially bond broken between the leaving nucleophile and carbon. So this is the TS of the reaction, that is transition state of the reaction. Now it has been found out that the rate of the reaction here, the rate of reaction directly proportional to the alkyl halide also it is proportional to the nucleophile so here we can see the rate depends on both the alkyl halide and nucleophile and that is why this reaction is called as bimolecular reaction okay here we are taking a polar aprotic solvent because the, here the uh, formation of the bond and breaking of the bond is taking place simultaneously so there is no need to you know surround the living nucleophile and all that so this is happening so later on in this uh, case the Br will be leaving from here and OH will be forming a bond with carbon. So we get this is as the product. So in the product we can see here you can see Br is on the right hand side. Here you can see OH is on the left hand side. So essentially this product we are getting is inversion of configuration. So this is your product inversion of configuration. So if I talk about the characteristics of an SN2 reaction, so it is a one step reaction, first, uh, first point it is a one step reaction, nucleophile attacks from the back side and the leaving nucleophile goes from here, we get a transition state where the formation of a bond uh, uh, and breaking of a bond takes place simultaneously, in the next step we get a product with inversion of configuration. The rate of the reaction depends on both nucleophile and the alkyl halide and that is why it is a bimolecular reaction. The rate of reaction in this case if I talk about the rate of uh, uh, the order of reactivity, order of reactivity of alkyl halides, if I talk about this then you understood that, that your 1 degree alkyl halide will be acting faster or reacting faster than 2 degree alkyl halide and which will be again faster than 3 degree alkyl halide. As the attack nucleophilic attack is from the back side so the, the alkyl halide has to be sterically free or sterically unhindered not crowded okay. So these are all about your SN1 and SN2 reaction I hope everybody understood. Now uh, we can I can just show you the uh, notes, you can take down the notes. This is our SN2 mechanism, substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction when methyl bromide is reacted with nucleophile OH minus, it gives methyl alcohol. This is a reaction methyl bromide, OH minus is attacking nucleophile, you get CH3OH which is methyl alcohol and Br minus which is your living nucleophile. This is the mechanism. 
this is your i have shown this product with help provide with a with a wedge and dash formula though it is not a chiral carbon but still i have shown it like that so h minus is attacking this carbon uh, and then there is a partial bond between the carbon and oh and between carbon and bromine the bond is partially broken this is a transition state and in the next state you are getting the product with inversion of configuration which is your methyl alcohol plus br minus Okay, so the next thing is note, very important note that is the order of ascent to mechanism in alkyl halide is given by CH3X that is methyl halide greater than 1 degree alkyl halide greater than, greater than 2 degree greater than 3 degree. This also I mentioned 1 degree alkyl halide and methyl halide what is the difference? 1 degree alkyl halide can be ethyl halide also. So they have taken methyl halide separately. It's nothing. This is also 1 degree, this is also 1 degree. Okay. In ascent mechanism the solvent should be polar aprotic which I mentioned again. For example, it can be acetone, it can be DMSO, it can be DMF, dimethyl formamide or dimethyl sulfonamide. This, this will be the uh, uh, solvent which are polar aprotic solvent. Now let us come to the SN1 mechanism which is substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. The reaction we have taken here is tertiary butyl bromide with attacking nucleophile OH- and the product is tertiary butyl alcohol and Br- is the living nucleophile. Let us see the next uh, slide. So, the mechanism is first step is formation of carbocation. This is a two step reaction as I mentioned. So, for first step is the formation of carbocation, and this is the slowest step. And here you need a polar protic solvent. So, uh, the, there is a bond breakage between Br and C, and that is called as TS1, and then the carbocation is formed. So, this is a carbocation, and Br minus is left from there. Since you are taking polar protic solvent which will surround the Br- and not allow this Br- to attack this carbon again. So that is the reason of this taking a polar protic solvent. Second state, formation of tertiary alcohol. So now the attacking nucleophile can attack from this side or can attack from this side. So if it is attacking from this side, it is shown that there is a partial bond uh, formation between C and OH. This is the TS2 here and then finally we get a product. So the factors affecting, now we are going to talk about the factors as affecting SN1 and SN2. We already have seen the mechanism of SN1 and SN2. We know the differences between the two reactions. So now let us talk about the factors affecting SN1 and SN2 reaction. So the next thing is the kinetic expression. So as I mentioned that the rate of the reaction depends on concentration of both the nucleophile and the alkyl halide and therefore it is a uh, K, where K is a specific rate reaction, we remove this sign with a specific rate constant that is K and hence the alkaline hydrolysis of methyl bromide is a SN2 mechanism. The salient features of the mechanism, the first thing is this is a one step mechanism. The methyl bromide that is CH3 acquires a positive charge and bromine acquires a negative charge because of the electronegativity difference between carbon and bromine. The attacking nucleophile OH- is also negatively charged species, hence nucleophile OH- cannot attack from front side, which I mentioned already. So therefore, the nucleophile OH- approaches to the carbon atom side away from the Br atom and forms highly unstable transition state, which we have already seen in the previous slide. Now, in the next step is the transition state. Now, we are talking about the transition state. All the three hydrogen to carbon atom are in a single plane. They remain in the single plane. The negatively charged uh, are equally distributed. The negative charges are equally distributed over both OH- and Br-. The transition state contains penta-coordinate carbon having. Carbon has five bonds over there if you see. Partially uh, uh, formed and partially broken bond. Having three sigma bonds in the plane making bond angle of 120 degree with each other and the partial covalent bonds along a line uh, perpendicular to this plane. So the carbon and hydrogen bond, they are on the same plane and they make 120 degree angle with each other. This means what, if I, uh, if I draw the uh, structure, okay, uh, you can see here, this, these are 120 degree, this bond angle is 120 degree bet between H, C and H, this is also 120 degree between H, C and H and this is also 120 degree between H, C and H. And this OH- minus and Br- minus, they are perpendicular to the plane, one is this from the upside uh, and one is from the downside. The breaking of C-Br bond and the formation of COH bond is taking place simultaneously as the attacking nucleophile approaches to the carbon from, free, from the back side, it forms methyl alcohol with inversion of configuration. Very, very, very important. So the first factor is nature of substrate. 
Now for SN2, the transition state of SN2 mechanism is penta coordinated and thus crowded. As a result, SN2 mechanism is favored in primary halides and least favored in tertiary halides. Already I mentioned this is just a write up, okay. SN1, a planar carbocation intermediate is formed in SN1 reaction. It has no steric crowding. Bulky alkyl groups can be easily accommodated in planar carbocation. As a result, SN1 mechanism is most favored in tertiary halides and least favored in primary halides. Secondly, the carbocation intermediate is stabilized by plus I effect of the alkyl groups and also hyperconjugation effect of alkyl groups containing alpha hydrogens. Okay? So, I am not going into the details of the hyperconjugative effect and all that because these are you have studied in 11th standard but understand that tertiary carbocation is more stable than secondary which is again more stable than primary and that is why SN1 reaction is most favored in tertiary alkyl halide. Okay? Come to the nucleophilicity of the reagent. Now, a nucleophile is a species that uses its electron pair to form a bond with carbon. This we have already seen. A more powerful nucleophile attacks the substrate faster and favors the SN2 mechanism. The rate of SN1 mechanism is independent of the nature of nucleophile. First, it doesn't, uh, there is no attack of the nucleophile in SN1. And nucleophile does not react in slow state of SN1. It waits till the carbocation is formed uh, and then it reacts with it. Okay, so that is the nucleophilicity of the reagent. Now the solvent polarity, SN1 reaction is favored by polar protic solvent, SN2 reaction is favored by polar aprotic solvent. So the explanation of it, SN1 mechanism proceeds by carbocation intermediate, solvation of carbocation is relatively poor and solvation of anion is particularly important. Anions are solvated by hydrogen bonding solvent that is polar solvent. Okay, anions matlab the leaving group, okay, Br minus, Cl minus, the leaving group that is uh, solvated by hydrogen bonding solvent that is a protic solvent. The SN1 reaction proceeds more rapidly in polar protic solvent uh, than in aprotic solvent. Okay, now come to the SN2, polar protic solvent generally decreases the rate of SN2 reaction. In this, uh, in the RDS of SN2 mechanism, substrate and nucleophile both are involved. Polar protic solvent stabilizes the nucleophile by solvation. And hence, aprotic solvent or solvent of low polarity favors the SN2 mechanism. Okay, so this is the writer for your SN1, SN2 mechanism. The entire thing, I explained you the concept. I showed you the writer. While writing, you have to write it this way. You get a long, long answer question from this topic. So this is very, very important to do it nicely. And uh, the, so that's it for today's video. In the next video, I'll be coming up with the reactions of um, halo adding okay so yes uh, so if you find these videos are beneficial for you please subscribe the channel and press the like button thank you so much stay tuned